Oh, and she reached out her feeble hand of faith. Come on. Yeah. And she grabbed a hold of the hem of his garment in desperation. Listen, desperation catches the heart and attention of God. In desperation, she grabs a hold of the hem of his garment. And Jesus stops where he's at and says, Whoa, wait a minute. Somebody touched me. Amen. Somebody's faith. Somebody's faith touched me. Amen. See your big spears of your beautiful prayers. They don't move God. Amen. Faith moves God. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith moves God. And she was desperate enough that she had faith that she could touch Him. She could be made whole. Amen. And when she touched Him, the Bible says, He said, somebody touched me. I felt virtue. I felt strength. I felt it go out of my body when she touched me. Oh, and she didn't just touch Him with her fleshly hand. She touched Him with faith. Right. And faith made her whole. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. The Bible says immediately. Jesus didn't turn to her and say, Here, stay on these pills seven days and you'll be better when it's over. Immediately she was made whole of her infirmity. Amen. Immediately this issue of blood that she had had for so many years dried up. Come on. Immediately. Because her faith touched God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Faith moves God today. That's why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen. When you shout because you're feeling it, that don't do a whole lot in the spiritual realm. Amen. But when you shout in spite of the way you feel, amen, that does something in the spiritual realm. Amen. Come on, brother Billy. Hallelujah. Good. When you feel like you're just bubbling over, yeah, and you got the joy, oh, amen. amen. Bubbling. That's great. Mm -hmm. Oh, but when you don't feel like you got the joy, yeah. and you don't feel like it's bubbling over, yeah. but you say, God, I choose to trust you. I choose to serve you. I choose to live for you, even though I ain't felt you this week, even though I ain't heard you this week. I choose to trust you. I choose to live for you. That's faith. That's, right. yes, That's faith. Amen. That's, true. That's faith. Faith ain't faith ain't true faith ain't never doubting. That's right. True faith is standing on God's word even when your flesh does doubt. Amen. Even when your flesh does doubt, you say, I know my Redeemer lives. And I know when he has tried me, I will come forth as gold. Praise I don't Lord. feel it, but I know. Amen. Yes, sir. I don't feel it, but I know it. Yeah. See, it's better to know it yeah. than it is to feel it. Amen. Because yes, sometimes the feeling, brother Sleeze, might not be there. Amen. Right. It's good today to feel it. I like to feel it, but I'd rather know that I know that I know that I'm saved than just feel it every now and then. Yeah, that's right, brother. Amen. I know that I'm saved. Come on. Amen. And that's what you got to go by. Yes, sir. <laughs> what you know, Paul said, I have learned. I have learned whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. Amen. Faith. Faith regardless of the circumstance. Faith regardless of what's going on in my life. Faith regardless of how people are treating me. Faith regardless of how it seems like the religious world and the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Faith that God is still on the throne and that prayer still changes things. Faith. Faith in God's Word. That what He said He would do, He will do. Amen. That if it's in, if God has said it, it is settled. Amen. Right. It is settled this morning. If God said it, there is no force that can stop it. Right. Amen. That's what we've been talking Amen. about. We've been talking about how that God's Word is the only everlasting thing you can trust in. That's right. Bro. Man's Word changes. Oh, come on. Amen. You may vote for somebody because of what they said, but I guarantee you after they get in there, they ain't going to do everything they said they was going to do. Amen. You cannot trust in the Word of man, but you can trust in the Word of God. Come on. Amen. That's the truth. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. Amen. Amen. Heaven and earth, the things that you see, and even the things in the world that you can't see. You see the heaven and the celestial that we that is in uh, that is in place now yeah. will not be your final eternal abode. Come on. The Bible says heaven will pass away. There will be a new heaven. Mm -hmm. There will be a new earth. Amen? Come on. 
So heaven and earth will pass away, but God's Word will remain. Amen? The Bible says in the beginning was God's Word. Amen? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen? That's it. God's Word, you can count on that. We've spent the better part of the last, what is this, four sermons or three? Trying to drill into our heads that you can't depend on nothing but God. Come on. You can't depend on nobody's word but God's That's word. Right, brother Bill. And you can't separate him from his word. Yeah. If he says it, he is obligated to fulfill it. Guaranteed. Because God is not a man that he should lie. That's it. You can trust God's word. I told you last Sunday or the Sunday before last, if something does not exist, when God begins to speak it, it will by the time he's done. All right. Did you hear what I said? Amen. If something does not exist before God begins to speak it, it will when he gets finished. Guaranteed. Amen. Guaranteed. Because his words, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Right. When Jesus spoke and told the disciples, he said, I gotta go to Jerusalem. They're gonna deliver me up. They're gonna Come kill on. me. I'm gonna spend three days, this ain't exactly all in the same place, but you know what he told them. He's gonna spend three days, three nights in the heart of the earth. Yeah. Like Jonah did. Amen. Yeah. And he told them how that he was going to rise. Amen. Yeah. He told them that. And once he spoke those words, there was not a devil. There was not a demon. There was no force that could stop it. That's why Peter stands in the second chapter of the book of Acts and says it was not possible that death could hold him. Because he had already spoken to existence. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up. No man takes my life from me. Amen. Right. They didn't kill him. He laid it down. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They didn't have the power to kill him. He laid down his life. And he had the same power. To take it up again. Amen. And once those words were spoken to existence, there was not a devil. That's, that's why I get amused at the church. Amen. To actually believe that for three days and three nights, Jesus was down in hell getting the fire beat out of him. Amen. I had trouble with that. One, it ain't in the scripture. Amen. Oh my goodness. Maybe y'all believe he did. Amen. The Bible says that when he spoke, it is finished from the top of the cross. The temple veil was written in twain. Yeah. One of the writers, I think it was Paul, that said he put he made a show of them openly, talking about any in the cross. When he finished his work on the cross, he turns to the thief, the malefactor, and says, Today, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Doesn't say nothing about having to go wrestle the devil for any keys. Amen. Amen. Come on. Number one, the devil ain't in hell. It ain't going to be very long till we preach a sermon on things that we've heard that ain't in the Bible. Amen? The devil is not in hell. Amen? When, you, when God asked the devil over there in the book of Job, where had he been? He said he'd been out walking to and fro up and down looking for somebody. Amen? The Bible says you have an adversary. He's the devil. He is roaming. He goes about you know, like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. He ain't in hell yet. Right. There is no battle to be won. The devil is not the master of hell. That's right. In eternity to come, he will not be some taskmaster in the lake of fire. If you read the book of Revelation, I think maybe the 19th or 20th chapter, somewhere right over in there, it says that he will be thrown into the lake of fire where he will be tormented day and night. Right. He ain't going to be poking you with a pitchfork saying, ha, 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 ha. He's going to be screaming out for mercy just like everybody else that didn't, that didn't turn their life over to God. That didn't put their faith in Jesus Christ. It's a place of torment that was created for the devil and his angels. Amen? Not as some kind of special little resort, but as a place of punishment for the rebellion that they led against God and His throne. Amen? Amen? And you can take that to the bank. Why? Because that's God's Word. Yeah. Yeah. You can trust. See, that ain't what something some man, oh, I've had a revelation. Listen, if your revelation don't line up with the Word of God, it ain't from God. Amen? Right, right. Anything, if you have a dream, if it don't line up with God's Word, it ain't from God. Amen? Yeah. I tell people that all the time. They'll come to me, oh, this right here. And I say, show it to me in the Word. Yeah. Amen? Show it to me in the Word. As long as we have that mindset, we ain't going to be deceived as long as we compare everything with the Word of God. In the King right. James Word. <clears throat> right. Well, when... When I say Word of God, I'm talking about the King James Version, amen? Because that's the closest thing we got. I don't even give those others any credence as far as that goes, amen? All right. But I'm glad Brother Sleeve brought that up. And that's another reason to make sure you have the closest thing 
to the original that you can because he said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. The Word of God is important today. Yes, it is. I know that religion seems to have put it on the back burner. Yeah. We have dance classes, Brother Dave. Yeah. We have clubs. We have cliques, Brother Bill. Come on. We have get-togethers. We have fellowships. Right. But it seems to me like the Word, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems to me like the Word of God has been replaced in a lot of ways in a lot of things the church yeah. has done. Amen. Amen. It, it dawned on me this morning while I was in the shower. Right. The Lord brought this to me. In 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, whenever Paul is getting ready to be offered up, whenever this may be one of the last times that he gets to talk to Timothy, he doesn't tell Timothy in the fourth chapter there. We don't find him saying, I charge thee, and I'm in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, in the first verse. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, right. and is appearing in his kingdom. When he gives him this charge, the first thing that he tells him, Brother Scott, is, he don't say, Timothy, now I charge you. I want you to go out and find a big corner. Build you a big, nice building. And fill it full of as many people as you can. Amen? That ain't what he said. Yeah. He gave him a charge to do what? Preach the Word. That's the very first thing that Paul tells him. Uh -huh. Preach the Word. Oh, we could use some preachers today Amen. that would just simply shut up the theology and shut up the denominational bull and preach the Word. Amen? We need some old-fashioned Pentecostal preachers that'll get behind the pulpit and preach the Word of God. Amen? Amen. When I say Pentecostal, I ain't talking about denomination. I'm talking about somebody that's had a Holy Ghost experience. Amen? All right. To preach the Word of God. He says, preach the Word. Come on. Be instant, in season, out of season. Amen. Reprove, rebuke. Come on. Now see, some of the modern day New Age stuff, man, took those two words out because they're all for the exhorting. Right. With all long suffering and doctrine. Well, what about those two R words in there? Reprove and rebuke. It ain't always going to be pat you on the back, you're doing good, just go on out and carry on the same way. All right. Sometimes, like Brother Slee said, God gets out the big stick. Right. Amen. And has straightened us up. Amen. Amen. He says reprove and rebuke. He's talking about what? Preaching the Word of God. He says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn their ears, away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch them in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists and make full proof of thy ministry. All right. Preach the word. Now see, that's where that's the only way you're going to not be deceived today. That's it. Bro. That's the only foundation that you can build upon today. Oh. Amen. Is the word of God. Amen. And you can't separate God's word from God. That's right. You can't separate Jesus from oh. God's word. Because the Bible says he is the yes. word. Amen. Amen. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. When you begin to read God's Word, God's Word points you to one person. Always has, always will. It was not the Pope. Amen? It doesn't point you to the Pope. It does not point you to Mary. Amen? There is none, absolutely no evidence whatsoever in the earliest manuscripts that they could even find that our translation came from that ever pointed to Mary as a point of salvation or as part of the redemptive process. She was always a handmaiden, beloved of God, but she was a chosen earthly vessel to bring forth God's only Son. She was never... That was put in there by the Catholic Church. She was never... That's why they killed William Tyndale. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's why they caused what some of the popes, some of the bishops, not the popes, some of the bishops got it and said, wait a minute. We can't have people reading this. This is too close to the original. This is too close to the truth. They'll quit giving money to get their loved ones out of purgatory. They'll quit giving money to get their loved ones out of the place of, you know, the, 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 where they're, you know, kind of in limbo. That ain't in there either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That ain't in there either. Amen. And I ain't picking on the Catholic Church. A lot of denominations have added to and taken away. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. A lot of them have added to and taken away. And a lot of them have grabbed on to the New Age versions because it's easier for them to add to right. and take away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's easier. I heard a preacher 
this past week and he was talking about the scripture that says in my father's house are many mansions All right. and he, he went on to say and I love this brother and he does a great job and it's a powerful sermon <clears throat> and I don't have a whole lot of problem with what he said because he didn't actually you know anyway what he said was that some people say that the King James writers were not as accurate as they should have been in saying in my father's house are many mansions that maybe it should say in my father's house there are many rooms so you know what I did I went back to the Greek to find out exactly what the Greek word meant. You cannot find room one time in the Greek words, in the Greek language. Not one time. Oh, you can find mansion. You can find that it means mansion, but you can it means a place of abode. It means a resident. Amen? But not one time. You can take it back farther than just the, the first words you find, but take it back to the root word and it still don't mean room. But you know why man put that in there, Sister Cindy? <clears throat> Man put that in there because we can't, when we think of a house, for a house that must have to have rooms. You can't get mansions in a house because, see, they try to compromise it with their old carnal mind. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And try, it, ain't, it ain't a translation. It's more, it's more of just a perception of the way they think things. Really, what did the writer mean when he wrote it down? Amen. Yeah. It never one time means rooms. Oh. I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm just telling you, go and find you a Greek and a Hebrew dictionary, a concordance, and look it up for yourself. Not one time does it say room. So when he said in my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. Amen? He probably knew there was going to be some pharisaical believers there in the crowd that thought, well, wait a minute. You can't get no mansions in the house. You can't God's house. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You can't God's house. Ah. Uh, Hallelujah. In my Father's house are many mansions. If you don't know the difference between a mansion and a room, I'll take the mansion. You can have your room. Amen? All right. In my Father's house are many mansions. And that's just one example of changing the Word. Amen. Without any foundation to back it on. I could see. Now, if I went to the concordance and if I went to the Hebrew meanings of the words of the Greek meaning, I'm sorry, to the Greek meanings, the New Testament was translated from Greek. If I would went to the Greek meaning of the Word and it said room, I'd have thought, well, huh. They might have had something, but they don't even, don't even have that there. Somebody decided that sounded better. Amen? His ways are above our ways, though, Brother David. Amen? His thoughts are above our thoughts, Brother Sleese. Amen? We can't comprehend everything with our mind. Amen? With our carnal mind. But if we can get a hold of this nugget that we've been trying to get a hold of for three or four weeks... If we can get a hold of the fact that the only thing we can grab onto today in the society as we know it and in all of the history of mankind that is stable. I'm talking about rock solid. I'm talking about being able to hang your hat on. I'm talking about being able to put your confidence in. That is the Word of God. Amen? Right. I ain't talking about man's books. I'm talking about God's book. Amen? Right. I ain't talking about something that you can take and burn. You can burn every King James Version you can find. You can burn every NIV. They might not even have a preference over there in Iran. They might even burn the NIV and stuff. I don't know. If it says Bible, they may try to get rid of it. But all their nuts over there in Iran, they're burning up Bibles. But go ahead. People tried that before. Guess what I'm holding today? Amen. They tried it whenever they killed people like William Tyndale and Wycliffe and all the other people. Yeah. It's still here. Right. Amen. That's right. Better rulers than those nuts in Iran. More intelligent have tried to get rid of it. It's still here. Amen. You can't get rid of the Word of God. You can burn the pages. You can tear them apart. But the Word of God is written on the tables of man's hearts. Amen. And more, even more than that, it's written in the Spirit. It is a spiritual thing. When Jesus told the devil, it is written, He wasn't talking about some scrolls laying somewhere. Amen. He was talking about it is written in eternity. Oh, it's an eternal thing. Amen. God's Word is written. It cannot be erased by man. You can burn it. You can rip it. You can shred it. But God's Word remains. You can get rid of every Bible on the face of the earth. But God's Word is eternal in His Spirit. It is life and it cannot be destroyed. It cannot be destroyed. You can't do it. You can't destroy God's Word. Amen. Satan has tried since the Garden of Eden. Right. Yeah. When he talked to Eve, Amen. Right. And twisted around the yeah. him and Eve got together there and started twisting the word. Amen. Right. He's tried, but since probably he probably tried an eternity past. Come on. When he said, "I will ascend above the throne. I will ascend above the Most High." Yeah. Amen. Come that on. went against God's word right there. Come on. God's word is eternal. 
It was before the world began. As a matter of fact, the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Right. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Through faith we know that the worlds were framed by the right. Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. The things that you see that were not, they are now because God's Word spoke them into place. Yes. There whenever darkness was on the face of the deep and the earth was without form and void and darkness was there, mm. when God said, let there be light, there was no force that could stop light from coming Come forth. Come when on. God says to Brother Tyler today that all things work together for your good. good. Amen. Because you're a call. Amen. All things work together for good to them that are called according to the purpose of, of God. Amen. Right. Who love God and are called according to His purpose. Yes. Nothing can change that. Right. Nothing can change God's Word Amen. from being, bringing forth fruit in your life other than you. That's right. You can stop it. No. You can quit believing in it. You can no. turn to fables just like it was talking about here. Come and on. then God's Word will not be able to accomplish what it wants to accomplish in your yeah. life. The only Come you on. can stop God. Yeah. Only you can That's stop right. God. Come on. Only good. you can stop God from doing what He wants to do in your life by rebelling and turning it. God ain't going to force you Amen. That's right. God wants you to come to church, but guess what? He ain't going to force you. That's right. He'll let you sit at the house on the couch and miss God and go to hell. Amen. Because you chose to. Yeah. Amen. God ain't going to force you to preach. That's right. He'll call you. He'll tug at you. Yeah. He'll try to get you to. Come but He ain't going to force you to. If you don't want to preach, sit on. He'll let you go to hell. That's your choice. Right. Amen. God cannot force His Word on you, but, oh, hallelujah, if you put your faith in His Word... Yep. There is not a devil, there is not a demon, there is not a power of hell today that can stop God's Word Amen. from coming to pass. That's the truth. When Joshua and the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho, Powerful. there was not a power that could stop the walls from coming down. Why? Oh. Because if they're marching, all scientists try to say, well, you know, because they marched around, they made the ground weak. Mm -hmm. They marched and they marched and it got something going on there. Mm -hmm. They're so stupid, it ain't even funny. Vibration. The vibration did it. No, it had nothing to do with the marching. It had to do with Joshua's faith That's in what right. God had told him would happen right. if they marched. Come Amen. On. Come on. Joshua's faith was not in the horn blowers. That's right. Joshua's faith was not in the priest that carried the ark. Joshua's faith was in the promise that God said, if you march and you blow and you shout, they will come down. All right. All right. Amen. My faith is not in my flesh today. If it was, I'd stay home. Amen. But I am persuaded that He is able Come on. to keep that which I've committed. I have, I have staked my life on God's Word. Amen. That's where my faith is at today. Not in man. Not in me. But in His Word. His Word is eternal. Amen. And once you put your faith... The little woman that we talked about at the fence when Elijah said, go get me some bread. Mm. When she took those steps of faith and she went to the meal barrel, there was no power that could starve her to death. All right. There was no way that it was not possible for that woman to starve to death when she put her trust in God's word. Come on. She didn't put her faith in the prophet. No. The prophet said, "If you'll bring me a little cake first, God will sustain you. The meal barrel won't waste. The cruise of oil will not fail." Until the day that God, the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So she walks away from the prophet, putting her faith in God's word. Mm -hmm. All right. That God is going to do. Did she ever doubt? Probably. Come on. We got this thing all messed up. That's right. We think we got to be some kind of superhuman. The flesh is weak. Right. Amen. 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 The flesh is weak. That's right. I'm not telling you doubt is a good thing. It ain't a good thing. But as long as we are in the flesh, it's going to be hard not to have a doubt. Amen? Amen. Because we are not perfect. Amen? As Brother Sleeze pointed out this morning. Amen? None of us are perfect. Amen? That's it, brother. So it's not the fact that she never doubted again. It's the fact that in spite of her doubt, she went right back to the meal barrel the next morning. Amen? Good. To get some meal out of the barrel. Amen? That's she went right. right back to the cruise of oil to get some oil out the next morning. Come on, preach. And guess what? Here's a shock. God's Word did exactly what He said it would do. She and her, her and her son and the prophet, her whole house, did eat until rain was sent upon the earth. Amen. We're talking about being able to trust in God's Word this morning. Yes. Amen. Trusting in God's Word. We talked about Joshua 
and his faith in God's Word. We could talk about Rahab there in Jericho yeah. and how that she had faith in what God had spoken through the spies. We talked about the widow woman. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 1 that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Come on. Talking about real faith. <coughs> this world, the very axis that this world rests upon is God's Word. Come on. When God spoke it, it started to become what He spoke. Amen. At the Red Sea in Exodus the 14th chapter. Amen. And the people began to murmur and complain because God had brought them up out of Egypt and there they stood. Come on. The raging Red Sea in front of them. Yeah. A mountain on each side and Pharaoh and his army breathing down their neck. Mm. And they started complaining. What Moses tell them? Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you shall see today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Why? Because when they were back there in Egypt, do you remember whenever God spoke to Moses out there in the wilderness the burning bush? Yeah. He said, I've heard the cries of my people. Amen. God begins to speak right then the deliverance of His people. Yeah. And all his people had to do was put their faith. The reason they stayed around in the wilderness, a bunch of them, all of them except for two, and died, is because they didn't have faith in God's Word. All right. The ones that did have faith in God's Word crossed on over. Mom. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Say it. If they'd have just remembered the words that God said and know that there is no power, it don't matter today, I know this week you might have felt like Moses. You might have felt like there was no way out. Yeah. The enemy was had you had you pinned in, amen. You ever see them old cowboy movies where the, the the bad guys would run into the canyon, you know, and and the the sheriff and the posse, yeah, they surround them and say they ain't got no way out. Yeah. That's the way Moses and the men felt, brother Bill. Yeah, so yeah. Amen. That's the way the circumstance looked. But God was saying, if you can just believe my word, yeah. if you can just stand on my word, yeah. if you can even in spite of your doubt, I know you have doubts, you're human. I created you, I understand what you're talking about. But if, in spite of your doubts, if you'll still just trust me, if you'll still just know that if I spoke it, I will accomplish it. And what happens? God speaks to Moses. Amen. God, go get me your stick out of the room behind the chair. God speaks to Moses. Yeah. And what's he tell him? He tells him to. Let me get my rod. <clears throat> and Moses said to the people, Fear not. I'm in the 14th chapter, 13th verse. Hope y'all brought on the sack lunch. Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. We read that part already. Come on. The Lord shall fight for you. That's verse 14. Yeah. And you shall hold your peace. Listen to what the Lord said unto Moses in the 15th verse. Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speaking to the children of Israel, that they go forward. I already told you what to do. Lift up thy, thy rod and stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go forth, shall go on dry ground from the midst of the sea. You see, if with Moses putting his faith in God's Word, when he said, if you'll lift up the rod over the sea, it'll divide. And the children of Israel will walk across on dry ground. Pharaoh couldn't stop it. The mountains on either side couldn't stop it. All the powers of darkness couldn't stop it. As long as Moses obeyed the Word of God, there was no stopping what was going to happen next. Amen? Listen, folks, I done read the back of the book. I know you get down and discouraged and doubt sometimes and maybe get depressed, but I done read the back of the book, and if you'll hold on, if you'll hold on, if you'll lift up the Word of God and say, God, here I am. I'm trusting what your Word says. I'm trusting what you told me. You will make it through because His Word says you'll make it through. 
Y'all remember what we learned about the rod before? Over there in Psalms, the 23rd chapter. Amen. Where David said, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I told you about how that I heard Perry Stone and knows much more about it than I do. Yeah. Talk about how that in that day and time they would take their staff and the experiences they had with God and the promises that God would make. They would write those things. They would carve them in. They would etch them in on that staff. And it talked about how the rod and the staff that, that comforted David was the fact that God had promised him things and the miracles that God had done in his life. And that comforted David. The Word of God can comfort you today. Amen. When it looks like that everything the devil's got and being thrown at you is accomplishing something, just rest, just lean over and rest upon the fact the Bible says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Lean over on the fact that the Bible teaches us that we are a winner either way. Amen. So whenever Moses raises up that rod, which was a picture and a type of the Word of God, Amen, there was no force that could stop what was going to happen next because God had already spoken it. Amen. I told you a week or two ago about Abraham as he walked up that hill with Isaac. Hallelujah. He already knew that God told him Isaac was his chosen seed. He already knew that God told him that his seed was going to be as the stars in the heavens the sands of the sea. Yeah. So he walks up that hill. Probably even had him a staff, Brother Bill. Come on, brother. Probably even had him a staff with the because that was pretty customary back then. Amen. Now we just see older people with them, but back then most all of them had one. Amen. Right. Probably may still have over there because of the rocky ground, the hills and things. As he's going up that hill, and Isaac's with him. He says, Father, where's the sacrifice at? And Abraham says, God will. God will provide himself a lamb. He's packing that promise. Amen. My Lord, when I walk the walk that I walk, and the devil says, you ain't going to make it, I'm packing my promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I wish somebody helped me preach this morning. When the devil says, I'm going to destroy you, yeah, the devil, I'm packing my promise. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No weapon that is formed against me will prosper. Hallelujah. All things work together for my good. In all things, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Come on, brother Bill. So Moses, he lifts up that. Stop God's word. All the all the false gods in Egypt couldn't stop it. Mom. Read over there when the plagues were sent, and Moses would proclaim the word of God. None of their calling on their cow god could stop it. The frog god couldn't stop it. The sun god. <laughs> that's really funny. Worship the sun instead of the one that created the sun. Okay. Amen. Sun god, moon god, star god. Man's stupid enough to make anything. I believe man would worship a cough drop if you gave him time enough to think about it. Amen. God's Word. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know what the word comfort there means? It means to breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, when I get down and I get out and I feel like singing the blues, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, that word that I've got written on the table of my heart causes me to have a sigh of relief. Lord, I know it ain't looking good, but whew, I sure am glad you already spoke victory. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I know it ain't looking good, but I sure am glad I got your rod and your staff to comfort me this morning. Yeah. Come on, Brother Bill. I'm glad you already pronounced victory over the situation because if I didn't know that, I'd be worried. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. And even when the flesh does weary, I say, flesh, remember what God said. Um, Believe in God. Right. Trust God. Amen. He'll do what He said He would do. Yes, sir. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff, yes. they comfort me. Because God's Word is eternal. It is unstoppable. It is immovable. It cannot be stopped, Brother Bill. Right. If you'll put your faith in God's Word, there's no force that can keep you out of heaven. That's right. Amen. Come on. If you want to see your worst enemy, go look in the mirror. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's true. Devil can't destroy you unless you let him. That's right, brother. Unless you take your eyes off the prize, off the Word. Amen. Come on. 
Because He's already promised you victory. Yes, sir. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Jesus name. Amen. We are more than conquerors today. Think about that. Right. Think about the fact that whenever Moses lifted up that rod mm -hmm. and it represented, whether it had those things carved on there or not, mm -hmm. I'm sure it did. It represented the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. wait. This here says, I'm going to bring my people up out of bondage. Yeah. I'm going to lead them to a land of milk and honey. Yeah. Oh. And that old Red Sea, yeah. see, great creation has to obey this Word. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Was it you, Brother Bill, or Brother Mike, that preached <clears throat> on about the boat the other night where the storm was raging Man. and the boys got scared? Yeah. Jesus had already said, let us go over to the other side. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a storm that could bring them down. That's right. They couldn't have sunk the ship, Brother Bill said, if they wanted to. Because right. God's Word done spoke it. Uh -huh. And what's Jesus do? He walks out on the bow of that ship. That's what you call it. Walks out on the deck. Mm -hmm. Looks at the storm. <laughs> and says, peace, yeah. be still. And nature had to obey right. God's Word. Amen. The Red Sea. See, man can't hear God's voice a lot of times. Right. But nature does. Yeah. Right. Moses stretches that rod out over the sea and the Red Sea hears the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah! Mm -hmm. And the Red Sea said, I ain't got no choice. This ain't never happened in the history of me. It ain't never going to happen again, probably. But boys, let, let's, get, let's, let's begin to make way for this tribe that's coming across the Red Sea because God's Word already spoken and we can't stop it. Praise God. Ah. Come on. The Word of God in nature has to say, get out of the way. Yes, sir. My Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why Jesus said that if the people don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. Because he's going to have praise and his word already spoke that he had praise. And if man has so much rebellion, she'll shut up. Nature will begin to cry out. Rocks will begin to cry out. Logs will begin to cry out. Amen. The walls will begin to scream praises to him. So the Red Sea has to get out of the way. The storm has to cease. Why? Yes, sir. Because of the word of God. And you are going to make it today. Because of the Word of God you put your faith in. That's right. Put your faith in God's Word. His rod and His staff will comfort you. They will get you through. Amen? Yes. God's Word is eternal. Mm -hmm. I told you that John said it was in the beginning and last week I'm closing. I can't give you all this. Last week we talked about how that John sees heaven open in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And he sees a rider come forth whose vesture is dipped in blood. Now, we're getting pretty close to the end of the book there, aren't we? Yeah. We're getting pretty close to the end of things. We're talking about the battle of Armageddon, the end of the world and all that. Guess what it says this writer's name is? The Word of God. Uh, praise the Lord. The Word of God. I love it. Amen. Woo! Pat me on the back with the toes. Amen. Good preaching. Thank you. The Word of God. What do you think you're going to be judged according to? The Word of God. Oh, wait a minute. You mean it's not the Church of God manuscript, the, the rules and regulations? No. Sure ain't. Huh. The Word of God. Mm. Who do you think is going to be sitting on that throne? The Word, the Word of God. God. The Word that became flesh and dwelt among them. Mm. Boy, we could go on forever, couldn't we? Amen. Powerful. Yes, sir. His name is called, it says He's true and faithful. Yes, it does. His name is called the Word of God. <clears throat> Get over there and read that. I think it's about the 19th chapter. It goes on talking about the battle of Armageddon yeah. and the enemy that comes up against him. Guess what defeats the enemy's army at the battle? The Bible says a two-edged sword goes out of his mouth. This Word of God that's riding on this horse, the two-edged sword goes out of his mouth and devours them, destroys them, defeats them. What is that two edged sword? The Word of God. The Word of God goes forth out of His mouth. Oh, I'd like to give that to you today. Hold on a minute, I'll tell you where that scripture's at. I ain't going to read it. <clears throat> Revelation is the 19th chapter. John said, I saw heaven open, 
And behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. And out of his mouth, the 15th verse says, go a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule over them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress, and goes on down and talks about some other stuff. And you get down here, this is where I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to read, I promise. And the remnant, verse 21, were slain, talking about this army that came against this, the word of God. The remnant were slain with the sword of him that set upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Did you hear that? The Bible tells us the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. The word of God. Defeats the enemy. That, do you remember what Jesus used in the wilderness? <clears throat> My goodness, can we get any of this this morning, Brother Bill? Here we see this rider that comes forth out of heaven. The Word of God defeats the army. Then guess what defeats the devil today? It defeated him in the wilderness. It defeats him today. The Word of God. Amen. Jesus, all He does is He don't spend no time arguing with Him and you know having we fellowship with the devil sometimes. Come on. Jesus just says it's written. Yeah. Meaning it doesn't mean do about it. Amen. When the devil tells you you can't make it, say, oh, but it is written yeah. that I can make it. Amen. That I will make it as long as I trust the Word of God. Amen. Put your faith in God's Word today. Amen. Amen. He will see you through. Yes. He's promised He will. And He don't break His promises. We do a lot of times. Right. Amen. That's true. Most of the time we don't mean to, but yeah. we do. God won't. Somebody else this morning have something.